Uh, video will be about the interior changes we made in the Rialta and some of the problems we've encountered since I last made a video a few years ago. And one thing we did was these covers here were yellowed out, so I just painted those with uh, some Rust-Oleum for plastic, just spray painted. And same with the hinge covers, which are up and down, and uh, it makes it look a little fresher. So it's a simple thing to do, and it uh, didn't take very long. And then um, on the inside, we had to replace these screens. Okay, now going in. Um, let's see. We'll start. I'll start in the front, like I did before in the previous video. Just as a reminder. If your mirrors aren't working, make sure you spray the uh, contact cleaner around here, the deox, and there's a good chance you'll get them working. Okay, and if, as long as it's not broken wires. Um, now, since last time we had 36,000, now we have 45,000 on the Rialta. Um, one thing I did was remove the scan gauge from this location down here, moved it up here. The reason I didn't do it before is because I had a hard time getting the switch moved over, the defrost switch, but it just turned out you just have to like tilt it down, I think, from the back side or tilt it up. I think it was tilted down, and then it was able to come out. Uh, one Rialto owner, he, um, you know, one of the trouble with the, the uh, scan gauge, I'll start it up, that didn't even come on, but Sometimes it doesn't come on. Oh, there it goes, it came on. Um, it did reset, but sometimes this number doesn't reset. All you have to do is hit more, hit the bottom button, and then hit more four times to force. And then that'll force a reset of the uh, gauges. And, and a lot of times it works. So the TFT just came on. And then the water, and then we're not driving. Now, LOD was another thing I didn't really know about. That's like load, and, and somebody wrote that if you have 30 or more load, then you probably may want to downshift your transmission, so you, it's more likely to lock up and get less heat. We still don't have a transmission cooler in this, so um, I used to have uh, average miles per gallon, but I decided to try this load. So I'll turn this off. Um, Another thing I did was I changed the stereo over. I had a JVC stereo there before, and this is just a not a very expensive JVC stereo. But the sound is much improved. And I also, which I'll talk about when we get to the back, is one of those rear speakers was blown out. Um, in the Rialta, the rear speakers are only 15 watts. And these stereos, the typical stereo you buy, are uh, 55 watt output per channel or per speaker. So especially if you're trying to balance the sound between the front and the rear uh, it's easy to blow out the rear speakers. And I think somebody previously blew out one of the rear speakers so so I was going to replace the front speakers to get better sound but after putting the new stereo in it sounds it's fine so I won't be uh, changing that over so I'm happy with the speakers now okay um, and then before I think that's all we did up here uh, don't forget the uh, cruise control unit is under here and you can order that on eBay. It, chances are if your cruise control is not working it's probably the control module. It was in our case. And I think that's it for the, the front. Um, we mentioned in the older, the other videos that we uh, removed these armrests to make it easier to get back and forth between the seats. We also changed the way we hook these safety belts up because when you rotate the seat around, these safety belts come out, they just kind of, whoops, they just flop like this, and they get in your way. I'm, I'm surprised Winnebago didn't like come up with a solution for this, but with the seat covers, we just uh, put some tubes under here that kind of hold, no, actually, I, I was able to clip the straps in for the seat covers, so I just uh, flipped this under now, and then it holds it up while you're driving, so they're not in your way. Okay, and then over on the kitchen side, we replaced all the faces for these cabinets. They were really yellowed out, and uh, 
is a place online called cabinetdepot.com and uh, you can order the exact size you need. And it's actually a fairly easy job because you just measure your old ones. And I got a style that was a little close, close but not perfect because uh, Reality uses a thinner um, trim around here. Uh, this is a little thicker, but it's. It look, I think it looks nice. So um, what, one thing we added was this little drawer down here. Not drawer, but cabinet had it flipped down. And then that creates some space uh, underneath. I'll put the flashlight on it. So you can kind of see in there. So we, we, we did that. And uh, what's nice is that when you're camping in the winter, it's kind of cold, like down south in Arizona or something at night. If you put your potatoes or uh, onions in there or something, some vegetable you want to keep cool. And it's also dark. And we put them in bags, like cloth bags, so we can easily pull them out because it is kind of a low space. But you do get a nice uh, little space there to, to throw extra things in. And it's just like a, a drawer uh, cabinet thing. And then I just put a couple hinges there. And I'm, I use a magnetic clip for it. So it just pops up nice. And then on this side, I'll rotate around. We took out the magazine rack. Um, and also got the same matching door. Um, and because magazine rack for us, it really, we weren't using it. And we want to get every little bit of space we can. So we got this. And uh, we built this shelf here. And uh, the wires kind of hung down. So we, we put those wires up top so they wouldn't be in the way because Winnebago didn't really care they just you know it was stuff behind the magazine rack so um, we're able to put light things in here because it doesn't really have a back it's not super strong oops on something to clean that up <laughs> um, so but it's a uh, it's a good space and it it uh, utilizes your space and the critical thing when you order this is to actually get measured out. These hinges in this corner are really tight, <laughs> but I should have probably got like a eighth of an inch or, or a quarter inch less width on the uh, cabinet, but it, it did fit, so I was happy with that. And I'll back off so you can see it better. Um, I talked about in the last video <laughs> that <laughs> These, uh, oops, I found a screw. I'm gonna put that away. That the uh, rollers on this fell off. Well, they fell off again. <laughs> so what we had to do is took this all apart again. And this time we uh, put some, I think we did this. We put longer screws in here rather than the short ones that Winnebago used. And uh, they haven't fallen off since. It's kind of a pain. Because um, you really do have to take the whole thing apart to get it in. So in case you didn't watch the other video, the table just flips over like this. And our, ours didn't come with both those black um, cup holder things. My wife just took some trim that Winnebago actually part sent us the wrong thing. <laughs> so we had to get the right part. And uh, she kind of made those little cup holder things. So I'll put the table back. And the right part was this maple trim. Uh, Winnebago parts or uh, Mobility RV, they have the uh, this maple trim. And uh, it really freshens up the look because the old trim was all faded and kind of brown. So we put it on both sides. This cabinet I didn't replace, it's still a little yellow. If I order new ones for the, the rest of the cabinet, so I'll replace this one. And uh, of course, one of the big things about the Rialto is this leaky sky roof. We put a new one on, which I mentioned before, um, a skylight. Uh, we haven't had any trouble with it since, so I highly recommend those corner brackets. And uh, rather than uh, drilling through and then there's really no reason to get those cracks again. And this is the inner skylight and, and this is the outer skylight. The outer skylight is the one that has problems. One of the things that if, um, to replace the outer skylight, you want to drop the inner one. It makes it a lot easier. You can see what's going on. 
but the more times you drop this thing and then put it back out and drop it this is just only into like you know thin kind of like a thin foam board and this oil a thick foam but a thin board so there isn't much for these screws to grip into that goes pretty much all around with the Rialto oh one thing I was forgot to mention that we learned is when you're running your AC in the front, your dash AC, make sure you run this AC at the same time because the compressor is designed, Winnebago designed it, to uh, run both at the same time. Otherwise you get too much pressure and you can get some icing problems or something like that in here. So always turn this on. This is, just turn it on when you're, when you're running your dash AC. And make sure these vents are open too when you're running it and uh, you're less likely to do damage to your compressor so keep keep that in mind because uh, it could be a real problem we, we found out about it before we before we uh, ran the AC which we've hardly run at all anyway so <laughs> okay so I mentioned that we got a new faucet last time nothing's changed there and uh, the oven these uh, silicone pads did work out by the way we don't get any rattle now and um, we took out the, uh, we haven't used the oven at all, so we took out the rack. We can slide two bins up top and we could put some uh, bags of things down below. So, um, you know, if you don't use the oven, it's good, but it, you know, if you do use the oven, you got it there. Oh, and one thing we did on this drawer, somebody had uh, reinforced the drawer behind here. Well, when we replaced this cabinet face, we uh, rebuilt this drawer so it doesn't need reinforcing anymore so that's kind of nice because it was a uh, it, it was a uh, really heavy with that extra wood there and the, the top one didn't need any reinforcing as you see we just put um, some use art for utensils okay in the bathroom one thing I was considering doing, I haven't done yet, is painting this door because it's a little yellowed out. All the plastic in the reality is yellow out eventually, but the door, since it has that gray trim next to it, kind of bothers me. And uh, down here, somebody, probably maybe at the factory originally, they might have touched up this area because there was some damage. But see, the gray paint is kind of held up. <laughs> but the, uh, maybe there was a scratch there or something, but, um, Anyways, that's something we consider doing. Now, one in the bathroom, we've never used the shower at all. So we took out the in the shower. The shower hose sat inside the sink, and uh, we just use it for some storage. So it was too much trouble. We don't even use the sink in here. So I mean, it works fine, but we just don't use it. We just use it for storage. We do use the shelf though, which is nice if you get the mirror there. And then the shower drain, which is down below. One thing we discovered, one thing, the problem with it is uh, the, uh, this is the drain. You're supposed to keep an eye on, uh, run your shower drain occasionally, because otherwise the pump does, it loses its water and you can't get it started again. So this is actually a screw. You can screw in a regular faucet. I mean a regular hose, a garden hose. And uh, you can use that to help prime the pump. But I don't know, last time I did, I had trouble getting it started. So I'm gonna, I gotta work on that. <laughs> but if you do not use your shower, it's a good idea to run water through here occasionally and uh, keep your pump in with water in it. Okay, and uh, there's the switch for the shower and turn it on, it turns green. Uh, my wife built this to hold some of our stuff and hang it from the door. We also took the, um, the lower um, towel rod out because when you're on the bathroom, when you're trying to get up, you're always bumping into it. And we weren't hanging anything from it anyway. So there's, oh, maybe we use these but where this is where the screw holes were. Use that to attach this. Now one thing, another thing I did was, I complained about in the last video, this is all yellowed. Well, 
I painted this, the frame, to balance it out. But I tried to get this fan off. I got it off the top, but I, and I got this hex screw out. But the fan wouldn't slide out. It's probably kind of rusted in there. So I just put some lubricant in, and I ran out of time that day. So I didn't want to put too much force on it because I didn't want to break the fan. But it's a lot cleaner, and, and this outer part's um, painted, so that looks a little nicer. All right, and the refrigerator I talked about, I thought it was a thermal couple last time. Well, <laughs> it was all kinds of problems. But it turned out to be the selector switch was offering too much resistance. Um, I've kind of gone through and pulled this out and on all the time. After that last video two years ago, we went on the trip, and about two weeks later, the fridge quit working again. <laughs> And one thing we found is every time we switched it to uh, gas, and we'd have kind of rotate before we'd make a good connection. Well, I bought a new switch, so I replaced the switch. And it seems to be running all right now. And uh, I've cleaned the burner, and, and uh, I actually soldered the wires uh, between the switch and the interrupter to try to lower the resistance. The important thing is on the interrupter, you want 30 millivolts. The, the, uh, Thermocouples should uh, create a 30 millivolt differential, and you only have 30 millivolts to run from the interrupter through the, the switch and then back to the other end of the interrupter. And then the safety needs to see at least 15 millivolts, from my understanding. And if the safety doesn't see 15 millivolts, then it shuts off. So if you get too much resistance between the interrupter and the switch and then the wire back, um, then it won't work. And then what happens, uh, Winnebago released a wire kit, they put in thicker wires and better connectors because after a while the uh, connectors oxidize up enough to create um, enough resistance so that the fridges wouldn't necessarily stay on. So One thing I did find, which I don't like about the gas fridge versus the compressor fridge, is that if you're camping in cold climates, even if I turn this all the way to one, you know, as far low as I can go, <laughs> the pilot was enough to keep the fridge cold, <laughs> freezing. So that's a problem. And also, when people complain if they're like in Florida in really extreme temperatures, they don't have, they have a hard time cooling the fridge enough. You don't have those problems with the compressor fridge. Uh, and then last time I talked about the hinges uh, for the door. An another one went so I had to replace them both. Other than that the fridge has been good. Oh and one thing I did do is I added this uh, this is a, a temperature control so one thing I wanted to find out is like it's a eBay for a dollar um, right now it's 23C but when it's running I can watch it at it, like if it's like 12 degrees C at night then I figure okay maybe we can get through the night without freezing everything in cold weather um, but if if uh, it gets too cold, like it's five or seven degrees already or something, I, I usually just shut it off at night and restart it in the morning. Because, you know, this isn't when it drops down about 40 or 30 at night. So, or even sometimes below freezing. So, um, but the nice thing is you can monitor the fridge temperature without having to open the door so you can see what's going on there. And it, I just ran the wire through the through the seal so it, maybe it's not the best uh, you know as far as you might lose a little well it seems to seal anyway so I didn't want to drill any holes through the fridge to run it so anyways so that's that's what I did on that so it's kind of a new thing and uh, on the antenna I removed it because in the wind it kept going ta 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 it bounced uh, so the the mechanisms on top, but the actual wing, that long piece is I removed. We we don't watch TV, but I can put it back, put it back later. See, and I put the maple trim here. It looks nice. And then uh, let's see what else we did back here. Okay, this is all about the same. We we just roll our bed. It's like blankets and our pillows and the foam pad for over the seat when you pull when you pull the the seats out to make a bed. And then it, we remove the uh, cup holder, so we have a big flat surface here, and that's where the screw holes were. Just put some caps on those. And then uh, this flips flat now. But one thing we like is now we have all the space to actually do stuff. With that cup holder there, it uh, 
through here. It took a lot of room. And then um, these roller pins kept falling out too. So I again got some uh, longer screws that were smooth on one side and uh, screwed them in and um, now they don't fall out. The old short stubby ones, they look like they were kind of pressed in before. They weren't screwed in and they, they fell out. So the table works really well now. No, no more problems with that. Okay, and uh, one, a big project we did was we had a rattling heater. Uh, this heater, when it started out, would go wang, and then when it heat up after about five or ten minutes, then it would it might mellow out where you don't hear any sound. So I was kind of frustrated with that. So I tried oiling um, the motor um, bearings, and it worked for a little while, not very long. And then I tried greasing them, and it worked for a little while, and then started up again. So I finally replaced the motor. The uh, motor is available. It's not so expensive. Like I can't remember what I paid, like 40 bucks or 50 bucks or something for the motor. And uh, now I don't have that problem. So this winter when I'm out camping, I don't have to deal with that noise. And uh, this switch, which uh, operates the heat from the front of the car when you're driving. Uh, my dad actually has the same model, 99HD, and he uh, his valve went because the way it was installed uh, underneath there, it kinked. And apparently, he got one of the last few ones available. <laughs> so, and uh, while I'm here is this water heater switch, if your tank's ever empty, you definitely want to make sure this is off because um, you could ruin your, overheat the tank and maybe ruin, ruin it uh, for the coil, AC coils. So you might start your generator up or something and then forget this this is on could be on and then you uh you know you're running a generator and and your tank's empty because you drained it for the winter and then you could end up ruining your tank so we put this little white tab on the end just so like maybe we'd more likely to see it if it was on actually we had something where the generator was kicking out every time we vacuum and um it turned out that between the uh the tank accidentally being on, there was water in the tank, so that wasn't a problem. And uh, the converter probably charging the battery and the, and the, and the uh, vacuum, it exceeded the generator output, so it probably kicked it off after about 20 seconds. So we couldn't figure out what the problem was. Well, it turned out I had this switch was up, where it should have been down, because <laughs> the overall uh, electricity demand exceeded the supply. For the rating of the generator. Okay, and uh, let's see anything else. I talked about the hoses last time under here, and we hadn't have to do anything with that. And one one neat thing I can't remember if it, I was put it on the old video or not, but in order to gain a little space, we put these bins here to store stuff. But you can put a wire rack. Over the over the pump, so that uh, you can. Otherwise, you waste that space. You don't want to actually put anything on the pump. So we just got this wire kitchen rack, and uh, just put it down there. And then we just got these bins, and we just you can just slide the bins in. And you get some extra space. Well, oh, and uh, let's see. Another thing you can do, is a lot of people, you don't want to necessarily leave this connect, this propane detector on all the time. So one easy way to do it is just pull your drawer out. And then the wire is right, the wire is right here. So you can just, connect and disconnect that. So if I just slide this on, you know, then, then I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's too bright, I think, but then this light's on and I'll power up. So, so that's an easy thing to do if you, uh, if you want. And the last thing I'll show you is we upgraded our floor Move this. We also got a bike rack. <laughs> and we have this flip up. 
Now a lot of people flip it the other way. The reason we flipped it this way is we use it for storage of um, apples and stuff like that in the winter when it's cool or anything you want but you can get at it from inside the van. <laughs> like if you flip it this way you can't get it it's harder to actually get in here when you're in the van. If you're going to put your chairs in here or something, you just want to pull it out the door, that's different. But we did it this way. So basically to build this, we just built a frame. And uh, I did it so it fit tight. So it's snug in there. And I actually could flip this around if I wanted to. And I just put these hinges on. Um, but we just put a rod there if we want to hold it up. These are like some cabinet hinges, but they turned out to be the right shape. I mean, the right way for this particular door. And then this is the, uh, we replaced the board for this, built a new one, because it was kind of a mess for the shower cover. And we couldn't find the exact uh, carpeting. So we used a lighter gray, it was just something at Home Depot, and uh, it looks nice enough. And um, the carpet in general in this van was pretty good, so we haven't decided to put a hardwood floor or anything like that in it. We kind of like the carpeting. Okay, well that concludes this video, and this is a 1999 Rialta HD. And uh, those are some of the improvements we made over the last uh, few years, and uh, keep you updated. Thanks for watching.